get yourself in trouble. Oh, I want I want to say something else. By the way, last Friday. David and I were at Yuri Milner's birthday party and there yeah, was a I chess tournament it, yeah. and uh, uh, Magnus Carlsen was there. And anyways, David was in the finals. Oh. Okay. It was David and his partner. Look at the smile on David's versus, face. Versus, right. Ma- hold on. Wait, I'm getting to a great punchline. Versus Magnus Carlsen and his partner. Mm. David won. Oh, wow. Amazing. His partner was, was uh, should I say Yuri's daughter, who I think yeah. is probably what, like 10 years old. Oh, she's old incredible. Yeah. She's like yeah, second she's in good. America. Right? Yeah, she's good. Yeah, she's good. She's incredible. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Thank you to Yuri. That was a really unique Happy in front of me. It was partner chess. My partner was uh, Prognananda, who's an Indian grandmaster, who's like a superstar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And look, playing in, you know, with Magnus Carlson was obviously that was a real thrill. Yeah, there you Congrats. go. Congrats. So when you the, rank the this trophy. with the birth of your children, <laughs> your marriage, uh, and <laughs> and this, where would that rank on the scale this of one through there. five? This is up <laughs> this is up <laughs> for there. your poor kids. <laughs> but you know what? Speaking <laughs> look of the, at the pod, smile, Zach is yeah. happy. Oh my god, I haven't <laughs> seen him that happy since since Trump won. Guys, look at look at that document I just <laughs> sent you. Lost. Before before we, we, can, we can wrap this up, thing. but oh. I want to show you this. Basically, I pulled all IPOs since 2020. So this excludes all SPAC mergers and real estate, finance, material, energy, utility. So kind of the big, bulky private equity type stuff. So it's it's mostly tech, consumer. 627 IPOs since 2020. More than half of them, or basically half of them, are trading at less at 0.2 times the total cash they've burnt. So um, there, you know, you can kind of look at total lifetime capital burnt by these companies in the retained earnings line on the balance sheet. And so when you pull out the retained earnings, it shows you right how much money they've burnt over their lifetime. And so the total money burnt by half of these companies is about $107 billion. Um, and the market cap of those companies is only $26 billion in aggregate. So a 0.2 times return on capital invested to date in terms of enterprise value divided by total capital uh, invested in Sorry, let me today. let me say let me say it in English and you tell me if I said it right. So, six hundred and twenty-seven non-SPAC, non-real estate, non-finance companies went public. So basically, six hundred and twenty-seven tech companies went public yeah. mm-hmm. since two thousand and twenty. So t- two years. Yep. And of those six hundred and twenty-seven tech companies, almost half or three hundred of them, forty-eight percent of them, are today worth about point two times. All the money that went into them. Yep. My yep. gosh. Wow. Yep. It's tough. And then it's and tough. then on the other half, the other half is um is the ones that have worked. So this kind of goes back to a power law point. But like as a venture industry, you think once you get a company public, it's successful. And the reality is that many of these companies, from a from an economic perspective, are still not successful. It, it looks like half, um, and perhaps much more if you include all the SPAC mergers. Uh, which uh, is another couple hundred, and and I I would guess the vast majority of those meet this criteria, are trading at less than the total cash that's been invested in them. Freeberg, this speaks to the age of excess that we just went through. We just weren't as efficient as we needed to be in running these companies, and now we're in the age of efficiency, austerity, excellence. Totally. But it and also these comp- to that's this great setup for a rebound, isn't it, Freeberg? Like I would I be don't looking know, through I, these. Look, I mean, one way to read this, I was speaking with someone who I um, you can bleep him out. I was talking with. Two weeks ago three weeks ago and he showed me in their um uh, how much should i say here it, this is a big investment firm and they have a big growth portfolio less than uh they have about 160 uh investments 180 investments in their growth portfolio 85 percent of the returns are generated by 10 companies of the 180 and that's in the growth portfolio these are supposedly de-risk businesses the power law so exists even the in power growth. law exists in growth and as you can see here the power law exists quite dramatically post ipo as well mm-hmm. so yeah. you know as you can see here only nine percent of these businesses have generated positive earnings over time um 43 about half of them are worth more than the total cash that's been invested in them um, and that multiple. This on is a cash production is, board is, study here, by the way. This is your done I, by your I, firm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. It's off public data. So the um, the multiple on the value of the companies that are worth more than their the cash invested is five point five times. So in aggregate, IPO since twenty twenty are worth four point three times the total cash that's been invested in them over their lifetime. Um, but the crazy statistic is half of them are worth significantly less than the cash that's been invested yeah. in them only 0.2 times. So the power law dominates both early 
growth and, and clearly uh, being public. But I think to your point, J. Cal, it also seriously speaks to the uh, amount of excess and it's really going to rationalize probably based on the conversations we had today about Twitter, Meta, Google, Amazon, uh, and, Google, Amazon yeah, and, and this as well. So um, certainly the a, good, a, a, also a, a the big, good news here is happening. Freeberg and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Jamal, we want more companies to go public and have that discipline of being a public company. This was the big critique of this quiet era of companies taking 10, 12, 14 years to go public. This is going to be uh, a strength for these entrepreneurs to have to fight it out in the public market under scrutiny. Correct, Jamal? 100%. I think like the Chris Hone letter, uh, I think that there are a lot of VCs on boards of companies who would love to say the equivalent thing to their private company. private company, company yeah, for um, sure. And part of the the dynamics, as as Freeberg just said, because it's such a power law, and people believe that you know you being with other VCs are really important. It turns out that most of these VCs abandon their role on these boards mm. and don't really hold people accountable because they're worried so it'll true. affect their deal flow. Mm, so and true. the problem is, it's a negative reflexive loop. It's but so these companies do poorly, and then as a result, they're viewed as not an effective board member, and so the next deal they get is a poor and poor quality. So the highly correlated portfolios in Silicon Valley are the ones that will get torched because most of those companies will receive very poor or no advice. And then mm -hmm. the few that will get to the end is because they have hard nosed people on the board that will force them to make really hard decisions. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Sachs, any thoughts here on the public markets? Oh, and sorry, then... wait, last thing. And by the way, Sequoia, who has had exceptional returns has always been known to be hard nosed. You know, a lot of people the critique against Sequoia from founders would would be that, oh, if I take Sequoia's money, they may fire me. Well, yeah, because if you're not good, it's the, the mission of the business is bigger than your ability to be the CEO. And so, yeah. you know, you just have to remember, like, there is no free lunch. We were not giving out free money here. For the you pendulum to go and swung one direction too far. They used to, the tradition in Silicon Valley used to be, you always replaced the CEOs, the, found, the founders with a professional CEO, uh, and Google being the turning point there, or maybe the last one. And then it became founders will control their companies with super voting shares forever. Hopefully, the pendulum now swings to some equilibrium. Sachs, what are you seeing in private the, markets? The, as we the start jobs to wrap program here? for surplus elites is going away. <laughs> the jobs program. <laughs> That's oh the TLDR. The jobs program for surplus elites is, surplus just elites professional is going away. Professional managerial class is under pressure. Yes. That's for sure. If you went woke, you may go broke because you have no <laughs> marketable skills. Man, your punch up guy is on fire. Is Dean giving you yeah, these one liners? <laughs> Who's Dean? You got somebody these? in the room with you? I have Dean? a punch up guy. Dean's I think he's got somebody sure, handing him notes. myself up. Who, Jackie the joke? Like, Jackie the joke man, Marling handing you a little notes there. <laughs> 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 All right, four. The Sultan of Science, David Friedberg, and also the executive producer of All in Summit 2023, and the Rain Man himself chess master and champion david Sachs, as well as the dictator we're going to go on a little road trip aren't we dictator a little road trip for we the are. dictator and jay cal yeah it's gonna be fun i am the world's greatest moderator who couldn't control the panel today i'll do better next week and we'll see you next time love you guys happy thanksgiving podcast happy thanksgiving love you, boys bye bye we'll let your winners ride rain man david Sachs. Source it to the fans, and they've just gone crazy with it. Love you, West Ice Queen of Kinwa. Besties are back. Go for it. That's my uh, dog taking a notice in your driveway. <laughs> Be. <laughs> what? <laughs> we need to get merch. Besties are I'm back. Doing all